In this video here, we're gonna be looking at how I graded this footage, which is a red Gemini footage. It is a really nice looking scene. We've just done a few major adjustments, I would say, well, not major, but we've done a few adjustments to really help bring out the overall feeling in this scene and set a really nice mood to it. G'day, welcome back. So here is a node graph here. Now in my first node here, I've done a simple IDT. So we've gone into a red wide gamut, red log 3G10. And then our output color space, we want to be working in, for me anyway, a wider color space. So DaVinci wide gamut, DaVinci intermediate. We'll leave all this as none and then turn that on. We want to go to our ODT here, our output device transfer. Input color space, we're going from that DaVinci wide gamut and DaVinci intermediate into our Rec. 79, gamma 2.4. Luminance mapping, we want to, well, sorry, tone mapping, we want to change that to luminance mapping use custom max output, push that bad boy right up. We get a wider range in terms of our luminance. And then we want to turn on our use custom max output. And then down in our gamut map rate, <laughs> down in our gamut mapping method, saturation compression. So we've gone from this, oh, sorry. We've gone this image here to this image here. So we go full screen we have a really nice looking image already straight off the bat. So we have really nice colors in this scene. And overall, I think this scene is really fantastic. We have a great frame. We have some issues with this light in the background. We'll be talking about that later on. But for now, looking at this image, I think it's great. I think the colors are great. Framing is great. Like I said, the lighting is really great. It's a really nice looking scene. It is actual footage, by the way. So she's moving around. So now we have that IDT and ODT set up. We have to choose, or well, we don't have to, but the way I like to work is I always like to work under a LUT. Now I've been designing LUTs over the last few months and I'm really happy with how they're sitting. Now I do own LUTs from a very famous and very great colorist, uh, obviously a lot better than me, but the LUTs that I've been making really suit my workflow. So I usually work them. So I wanted something that was still uh, nice in saturation and contrast, but I didn't want something that was gonna overall completely change the image. So I've gone with something just a little bit in the kind of mid area. So with our LUT off, this is what it would look like. But if we turn that LUT on, we have a much more saturated image and a little bit more moodier. And this is what I really liked. I really wanted that starting point. I didn't want something that was gonna be so over the top. So that's why I chose this LUT here. So again, off and on and sitting in a really good spot. Now, the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to look at halation. So I'm going to go to my halation node here and we can bring it up in the effects here so you can see all my settings. So if we can zoom right in and turn that halation on, we're getting this effect. Now, I really like halation and I think it looks great. You can overdo it but I feel like this is sitting in a nice part. So I really like the way the light is hitting her fingers here and her little shake. I think it looks great. It's just building a little bit more interest to our overall image. And all in all, it looks great. I really like collation. Um, I wouldn't use this for everything, but I feel like this kind of has that vintage kind of look to it. So I feel like collation works with this particular scene. My next node here in my darkness node, I've just right clicked, gone into my gamma, pulled this into linear, and I've just brought down the gamma gain and offset. So I've just brought a little bit more mood to this image here because I feel like this scene is a little bit moody. I didn't want some poppy saturated image. I really like, you know, if you've watched the channel before, you know that I like a lot of mood in my images. So that's why I really like this image. I mean, overall, this image is fantastic. The, the lighting is amazing. The production sign is amazing. Just the framing of the whole scene to me is incredible. Like the way it's shot, um, really nice layers. And that's why I think this image just looks really fantastic, really easy because it's done. They've done such a fantastic job. And as a colorist, you want this type of stuff. You want the high end, really nicely shot stuff because it makes you look so much better, even if you're not. Okay, now in our shadows here, all I've done is just brought it up just a little bit. I feel like we were just a little bit too dark. So I just wanted to aim um, in those dark areas. So I've just done down, sorry. So I've just gone in my curves here and I've just brought up 
just a little bit in those darker areas. And I feel like that's going to just lifting whole scene a little bit more. Now, one of my favorite things that I like to do is I like to do density, but I like to do it in a way that's not using the DCTL. Now I do have DCTLs, but I like this method too. So to do it, if you don't know how to do it, just right click your node, composite mode, come down to luminosity. Now you, you only see that if you're in DaVinci 18 and above, by the way. Um, I think anything below you can actually do it. And then what you do is you go to RGB, put it to monochrome, and you'll go from this image here to this image here, and you're just building that little bit of density in your overall scene. And off, on, off, on. I like it. I really like this density trick. I think it's fantastic, and I use it a lot. And overall, again, it just looks great. You're sitting in a really nice part. It's just the way that the reds look afterwards. Dense reds always look really good when you're adding more density. That's a weird way to say it, but reds look better when they're denser. So that's why I would always make my reds denser when I do a particular scene. Because just look at the strawberry and her jacket. And it just it just feels it makes the scene feel heavier, if that makes sense. And I really like that. It fills it in. Moving on to my next node here. I found that with this particular scene one thing that really stood out that was a little bit frustrating was this light here um it's too bright but also it's got too many colors going on and it was really distracting so what i've done i've used a dctl a gamut compressor from this guy here i'll leave a link below but I'll also put something up on the screen here and he has amazing dctls him and um, another guy called stefan i'll link both their stuff this is not a sponsor I just think they make really amazing stuff. And as a colorist, I think they're really, really helpful. So I've just done this gamut compressor here and that's just helping to bring it down. So we go full screen off and on. It's not doing a whole bunch. Um, this is as far as I could probably get it without making it look janky. So I've actually blurred it out even more and taken some of the saturation out. But again, that gamut compressor is helping so much so fantastic dcl and again i'll leave a link to their websites below with this next note here i'm doing an overall density and this one is by that stefan man and if we just go full screen here so this is with that density off we have a good looking image of course but if you turn it on we're getting a really amazing looking image look at those reds they look fantastic and just in the yellows and everything to me looks really fantastic. I'm really happy with how this is sitting. It's like, she looks amazing. Like the colors and everything, they just look fantastic. I'm really happy with what that DCTL is doing. Now, moving on to the next note, I was feeling that she was being a little bit lost in this scene and I wanted to bring out her face because yeah, you always go for someone's face or someone's eyes. I always feel like Someone's eyes are the most important thing in a scene. So what I've done is I've done a simple power window around her face here and use custom curves and just pushed up some of that brightness. Now, I didn't want to go absolutely crazy because I didn't want people to be spotting the that fact that there is a vignette. So I thought that if I make it nice and subtle, it's not going to be so obvious. And I don't want people to point out you know, obvious things about your color grading. So I feel like this little adjustment is just helping to bring out her face, which is obviously the most important thing in this scene here. Now, in terms of the next one, I've done another DCTL, and this one is just adding a little bit more saturation to our shake here. So we go a little bit bigger. So I wanted to sort of bring this milkshake out because I find it looks really interesting. I really like the color of it and I wanted it just to pop. You know, I feel like nothing, well, not nothing was popping, but I wanted something to sort of pop out in this scene. So we turn this shake on. As you can see, we're just sort of like popping it out. So again, so this is off and this is on and it's just sort of giving almost that, um, I don't know what the word is, but it's like a dreamy type of look. So, you know, it looks like a sort of a dream sequence. It's it's really popping out in that scene. And I feel like it looks really, really good. I really like the way it's pumping up 
just the highlights here too. So I've done that DC tilt, obviously, but I've also done a little bit of adjustment in the curves here. So just pushing up that overall brightness and adding more saturation into that shake just to make it look a little bit more interesting. Now for the next one, I thought I'd do something a little bit different and I thought I would add in some light rays to this scene here. So I wanted something sort of to break up the scene. Um, I felt like a little bit too, not flat, but I wanted like layers of light, you know, bright, dark, bright, dark, et cetera, et cetera. So I've done some light rays here. So we turn that on. We have these light rays coming out. Now, what I really like about this is that, first of all, it's paying more attention to our character here, but it's also building layers into our scene, which is really important to me. So we want to try to avoid you know, your image looking flat. So we're adding these little simple light rays here and we have a power window here and sorry these are the effects here working we have a great looking like you know great looking adjustment off on looks great um you don't want it to be hitting directly onto a face so you don't want like a light ray hitting onto a face here because first of all it looks really obvious but second of all cinematographers always talk about when you're lighting your character, sort of lighting across them, so not directly onto their face. So off, on, just hitting her face, just just a little bit, but hitting that shake again, which is really making that also pop out. So I really like what that's doing. Now for my last node here, I felt, I felt like even though I like the look of the scene, um, I thought that maybe she could stand out even more it was a little bit of a red wash going on. So all I've done in my offset here, I've done a simple little push towards that tealy green or tealy blue green. So if we bring this up full screen, this is beforehand. It's quite red, like an overall redness to it. And then we make it, well, let me turn that note on, sorry. Now she is really popping out and this looks really great. Again, this light is really distracting. Um, we could probably go back and make even more adjustments on it and try and get it to a better spot. But for now, we'll just say that's good. But anyway, this looks great. I really like this green and red going on. Obviously, they're complementary colors. So that looks fantastic. And all in all, really happy with how she is sitting in this scene. Our focus is completely on her. A little bit on that light in the background, but that's okay. But it's more focused on her. It's just a really good looking scene. Um, yeah, really happy with how this turned out. So that's the video for today. Turned out really great in terms of the grade. Video is probably terrible. But if you want to see anything else in the grade or anything else on the channel, make sure to comment below and I'm sure I will get to it. Thank you again for watching. I've been Drew from Haiti Films and have a great day.